in the lead car, President Mrs. Kennedy, and then a Secret Service car, and then our car. Streets were lined with people, lots and lots of children all smiling. We were rounding a curve, going down a hill. Suddenly, there was a sharp, loud report. The shot, and then two more. I heard over the radio system, let's get out of here. And this man who was with us vaulted over the front seat on top of Lyndon, threw him to the floor, and said, get down. Cars accelerated faster and faster. I cast one last look back over my shoulder, saw a bundle of pink. It's like a, a drift blossom lying in the back seat. It was Mrs. Kennedy lying over the president's body. Still gives me chills. That was, of course, the inimitable voice of former First Lady Lady Bird Johnson recalling the assassination of John F. Kennedy, which marks its 60th anniversary next week. Later that day, aboard Air Force One, Mrs. Johnson and Jacqueline Kennedy stood next to Lyndon Johnson as he was hastily sworn in as president. Shortly after that day, Lady Bird began recording her thoughts during the Johnsons' five years in the White House. Those recordings remained private until she died at the age of 94 in 2007. Now that audio is shedding light on her legacy in the new documentary titled The Lady Bird Diaries. It's streaming on Hulu. Joining us now is the film's director, Dawn Porter. Peter Baker, you have the first question. Oh. Uh, hey, congratulations on the film. That's really going to be a fabulous uh, thing to watch and, and particularly well-timed. Uh, I know it's based on the book, the fabulous book by Julia Swig, but tell us about what you learned as you were listening to these tapes from 50, 60 years ago, what you learned about Lady Bird Johnson that people in, uh, you know, the younger generations might not know or remember about her? You know, um, Lady Bird Johnson is well known for efforts, people termed it beautification, but actually she was really an environmentalist. And her work led to LBJ signing more than 300 bills to protect the environment. Richard Nixon actually credited her with uh, the research that led to the formation of the EPA. So while her work was termed beautification, and that's really, you know, kind of what women were allowed to do. They can plant flowers. But really, Lady Bird was one of our first environmentalists. So that, along with so many other um, personal private moments about their marriage, about the presidency, um, that's what we learned from hearing the tapes. So Peter uh, talked to some members of the family last night, and one of the stories he heard was uh, how shocked uh, Lady Bird was when she went south, went down to Alabama. She wanted to go down, talk to, to people in Alabama, explain what uh, they were doing, uh, and yet she was met with jeers, uh, just very hostile reaction. How difficult was it uh, for her uh, to endure uh, what, what, what she and LBJ endured the rest of their lives, considered traitors to their own region? You know, one of the most interesting things that we discovered was Lady Bird was really one of the first political spouses to go by herself on a campaign tour. Eleanor Roosevelt very famously went to make speeches on behalf of FDR, but Lady Bird went on something called a whistle stop tour. LBJ sent her there very strategically. They were both very strategic political operatives. And he knew he had to keep the South. He had to keep those black voters that had propelled JFK into the presidency, but he also couldn't lose the white vote. So he sends his white Southern woman on this whistle stop tour, and she's met with very, very ugly protests. But she holds her own. She completes the tour, and actually, Lady Bird does deliver the South for LBJ. Don, first ladies are often thought about as the person who dutifully stands by their husband, but the film really captures sort of how some of how she reacted to or responded to moments in history, including critiques and attacks on her husband. What did you learn about her from that, or, or even generally the role of first ladies in that in that regard? 
You know, um, one thing that people forget is that before JFK was assassinated, there was no plan of succession. There mm -hmm. wasn't a number two. So JLBJ had no vice president for that first uh, period where he completed JFK's term of office. Instead, he had a, a group of close advisors, including Lady Bird. But some of the most stunning things that she talks about are um, LBJ considered resigning the presidency, and he was going to do it in a public uh, address to the nation. And Lady Bird writes out his resignation speech. He puts it into his pocket and he goes to address the nation. And she's recording as she's watching him deliver this speech. And she says in the recorder, is he going to do it? And when you look at the tape, you see that moment where we almost had a president of the United States resign. I think, Jen, you can imagine what, what holy heck would erupt <laughs> if the president <laughs> resigned during a public address. But that's just some of the yeah. things that she tells us um, mm -hmm. through her diaries, which are now available, now that she made them available. She also made Johnson's tapes available. And those have been, you know, just such a benefit to history. So remarkable. The documentary is The Lady Bird Diaries. It's streaming now on Hulu. Don Porter, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me.